On today's DAS tutorial, we're going to look at how to do uh, do-it-yourself ghost lights, DIY ghost lights. Um, so if you haven't seen my earlier ghost light tutorial, I'll link to that above. And in that one, I used a uh, product that I bought from the DAS 3D store called Ghost Lights, which is a way of using a primitive light source while hiding the light source itself from the scene. Um, which uh, I had a few people point out uh, correctly that there is a way to do that yourself. I still use the uh, the ghost light kit uh, quite a bit just for a really you know quick and easy way. Um, they have included presets and it takes very very little setup in order to get that ready to go. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that yourself, which is actually relatively easy. It takes a little bit longer, um, but but it's still pretty easy to do. And some of you may want to do this instead of actually buying the uh, the ghost light kits product from the Das 3D store. Um, and this is very similar to, uh, it actually uses the same technique as using a primitive for, uh, as a lighting source, which I did as my very first uh, upload on this channel. So I will link to that as well if you want to check that one out. But um, it's been a while since I've gone through this, so I'm going to go ahead and walk through that process um, again, but maybe a little bit more uh, quickly than I did last time. But first, uh, for comparison purposes, I'm going to go ahead and get a ghost light set up. So I've already got my IRA ghost light kit um, ready to go. And I'm going to bring in my, uh, I'm just going to do a vertical ghost light. And let's go ahead and load that into the scene. And you can see I've already got a camera in the scene. I've already got my figure dressed and ready to go. And I also have all of the lights removed from the scene. Um, so there's no lighting in here whatsoever. I've got the light turned off on the camera. So if you go to camera, headlamp, make sure your headlamp is turned off. And also under um, the render settings, if you go to environment, I've got it set to render scene only. So there are no dome lights. Uh, by default, it's on dome and scene, which includes some ambient lighting. But I'm going to do a, a purely scratch lighting just so we can see the different um, the effect that the ghost light gets and how we can kind of mirror that um, with our DIY method. But if I go to the camera, you can see everything is completely dark. And if I go to IRA view, it is pitch black. We can't see anything except for, of course, that, um, that ghost light that's in there right now. Yeah, and there we go. Completely dark scene right now. You can see my figure and my ghost lights if I highlight them. But uh, we are completely devoid of light. All right, let's go back to texture shaded view. And I'm going to go back to perspective view, which automatically lights everything if there are no lights in the scene. So that is great. And I'm going to go ahead and get my ghost light in position. Um, I'm just going to rotate that a little bit. And I'm going to bring that above my figure and uh, then rotate it towards her. So it's kind of going down at an angle. There we go, so I'm just gonna light her right side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create another light that's going to be a primitive lighting source that, where we're gonna create our own ghost light and I'm gonna put that on the left. Um, so let's go ahead and do that and I'll get these lined up. So to create a primitive, we're going to go up to create at the top and new primitive and we're gonna do a plane. So you do have a few options here, uh, cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, uh, torus, which is uh, kind of like a donut shape, and then a plane. I usually do this with a plane, but you should experiment with this and try different things. You can get some pretty cool lighting effects with a sphere. Um, it'll act kind of like a globe light. Um, so you can do uh, get some really cool effects like that. It'll make your, your lighting look different in, in some subtle ways. But again, yeah, just experiment with it and find out whatever works best for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a plane. So it's gonna be just like our ghost light, but this technique should work for any of the shapes. Or we're going to hit accept and it's going to create a new plane at our zero point uh, in the scene. So um, let me go ahead and bring that up and I'm going to kind of mirror image what our ghost light is doing. It doesn't have to be precise. I just want to get kind of the right basic idea. So let's rotate that up and that should be good. And I'm going to scale that up. So that's just going to expand it in every direction until it is roughly the same size as our ghost light overshot it just a little bit. Let's bring that down some. There we go. That's pretty close. That'll do. And I'm going to move each of these bags just so we can see the individual lighting a little bit better when we apply lights to those. There we go. And excellent. That is exactly what I want. All right. I'm going to go ahead and finish getting my ghost light set up now. So the way that we do that is um, we're going to apply... Oh, goodness. So do we apply our presets first? Uh, let me see. 
There we go. Okay, so we got to do the setup before presets. Um, so this is a single-sided light, and so that means that the light is only going to emit in the direction of the arrow. One cool thing about doing this yourself is you can set it to do a single-sided light or a double-sided light. If you want it to emit light in both directions, uh, we will be able to do that, but the ghost light is only going to go in one direction. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do my uh, setup, and that's going to basically render our ghost light invisible or the texture invisible. So now when we apply lights to this, we're going to be able to see the light emitting from it, but we won't be able to see the light source itself. So if you imagine that this is like uh, kind of like a light bulb, like if you look directly at a light bulb in real life, like you see a huge bright light, but you can also see everything that that light hits. So imagine if you could see everything that the light hits, but not see the light bulb itself, which of course, is, as far as I know, is impossible in real physical space. But that's what we're going to do here, because we might not want this light source to actually appear in the scene. We just want to see the light that it creates, uh, the light that it, uh, basically everything the light bounces off of. Um, so again, one cool thing about this is we have some different presets. So, um, and I'm going to show you how to approximate these uh, by manually adjusting our settings. But uh, for instance, if we go to intensity presets, I'm going to go ahead and put that at 1000K. Uh, time of day. Let's do. Uh, let's do. Let's do sunrise. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my camera now and uh, view this in iRay. And uh, let's see what this looks like so far. There we go. So you can already see that ghost light effect. It's got that sunrise look, that kind of yellowish, orangish glow. And on the other side, we have nothing. So again, one of the cool things about this is the presets that are included. So I can go to daylight, and it's going to be a wider kind of light. You can go to overcast and it's going to be a little bit gloomier, kind of a bluish gray look. And you can also use these different color profiles. So you can go to 9000K to do like a super, uh, super dark look. The opposite extreme is 1000K, which is going to be very, very red. These are kind of extreme effects. For most of these, I would stick towards the middle. Uh, most of these are really subtle effects, but uh, can really lend a cool look to your uh, scene if you use the if you use it in the correct scene. Uh, just depending on whatever uh, whatever kind of effect you want to go for. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on. Let's do overcast for right now. That'll probably be the easiest to do first. Oh, and I got an error message. Let's try that again. There we go. I think I just accidentally deselected my ghost light. There we go. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get our primitive set up, which we can see it in the scene there. It is nice and bright. And uh, we're going to apply an emissive texture to this. And this is really tricky. Um, uh, at first, there were a couple of steps you have to do very precisely or this doesn't work. So the first thing we're going to do is select our primitive in our scene. Then we're going to go to the Surfaces tab. By default, that should be on the right side of your screen. And right now, by default, we're under the Editor tab. And we have to click plane over here under where it says currently used. This is the important part. I, for, I forget to do this all the time. And if we forget to do this, none of our settings are going to work. So be sure that you select that here. Then go to presets. And under shaders, um, you should have a section, uh, or under uh, all files rather, you should have a section that says shader. We're going to go there under iRay. And then emissives is what we're looking for. And this should be included uh, by default in, in your uh, uh, in DAS 3D. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and double click that emissive texture. And basically, this is just making it emit light. And so when I do that, now it disappears from the preview pane. I can see it if it's you know outside of that viewing area, if it's outside of my viewport, or outside of the uh, render area, rather. But inside of the scene, is completely gone. Because right now, even though it's set to emit light, the emitter is turned all the way down. It's basically at zero, so it's not actually creating any light. So it's basically like we just have a light, but it's turned off right now. Um, all right, so we're going to go back to editor. Um, oops, let me make sure I have that selected. There we go. And again, select plane. And then all of our different settings are going to appear. Now, this looks overwhelming at first because there's a whole lot of stuff that we can do to it. I might get more in-depth with some of these later. But right now, I'm just going to show you a few that we're going to use. Um, the first one we're going to look for is emission temperature. It'll probably be about, uh, about halfway down. And um, we're so the lower this is, the redder our um, 
light emission light is going to be and the higher it is the bluer it's going to be um, I think I got this backwards in my last video um, but yeah, uh, so when, when I was first learning about um, about lighting temperature, um, I learned through this by using Lightroom and Photoshop. And I don't know why, but in, in Lightroom and Photoshop, the Adobe products, it's backwards. Uh, so lower temperatures are bluer and higher temperatures are redder. Um, so again, so just remember on this one, low temperature is red, high temperature is blue. But if we set that at 6500 K, um, I don't know why it's not 6500 by default because 6500 is pure white light. It's not blue and it's not red. It's right in the middle. Um, so I always start by setting this at 6500K. Later we can adjust that if we want to, but for now I'm going to put it at 6500. I always do that when I'm, when I'm first setting it up. Um, something else that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on, uh, I'm sorry, turn on two-sided light, which means that our light is going to emit from both sides, and now you can see that turn on. Um, because by, uh, when you have it off, it only emits light from the top of the plane, so it only emits in that direction. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, or you could turn it on and just flip that around, but, you know, usually just turning that on the double-sided light I find a little bit, little bit easier to do. All right, and then next we have luminance, which right now is set at 5,000 lumens. And the higher this goes, the more light it's going to put out. The lower it is, the less light it's going to put out. So I'm going to go ahead and start bumping this up, and it might take a pretty significant adjustment before you start to see much of a change. But as I bump that up, you're going to start seeing her right side be lit up more and more. And again, like I said, you might have to be very, very aggressive with your uh, uh, levels here. Let's go up some more. And yeah, still not doing much. I'm just going to put it in a manual, uh, put it in manually. What are we at now? 87,616. So let's do 200,000. Still not much. I think I actually did 20,000 instead of 200,000. There we go, so that's 300,000, and now we're starting to see that light come in. We can also get a little bit more dramatic effect by moving it closer, and it looks like it's a little bit further away than our ghost light right now, so I'm going to move that a little closer. Boom, there we go, now we can see her, her lit up a little bit more. So if I wanted that to look more like the right side, kind of overcast, um, we can do that by changing the emission color, and uh, which is, there we go, right above the emission temperature. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and start with a little bit more of an extreme effect just so we can really see how this works. So I'm going to go back to Sunrise, which cast a very yellowish, orangish uh, kind of color onto our figure. Um, so now let me go back to my plane. And so I'm just going to find like a similar kind of yellowish, orangish color in my color selector. And there we go. So now we've got a very similar look to our ghost light. So right now you can probably see the inherent problem in this in that we have this huge emissive texture over here, this, this huge white plane, um, which this works great if you, are, if you aren't having that, um, if, you, if you don't have your camera pointed to this in your scene. However, if I wanted to do a shot from here, then we've got this gigantic white square over there in the side. So the way that we're going to fix that is by using, uh, let me see, the cutout opacity. Um, so on this one, if we bump it down to zero, it completely disappears along with the light. So now that is no longer emitting light. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that at a very, very low but non-zero value. So this is the weird thing. If it's zero, the, uh, the, the object and the light completely disappear. However, if it is anything above zero, the, um, the, uh, uh, primitive, the object is essentially going to disappear, but the light still stays at full, uh, which is kind of interesting how that works. So um, let's reset that then. Oh, where did that go? Um, there it is. I always lose this one. Um, so we're going to set that to 0 0.001 and hit enter. So now we get the light back but we kill, still can't see our texture. We can see right through it. And I'm actually going to even go lower than that instead of doing, because um, I can still kind of see that a little bit um, in, in, in there as messing with our render. 
So let's go back to that, and I'm going to do, it looks like it, you can do up to four decimals, so I'm going to do 0 0.0001. There we go, that looks a lot better, actually. So again, you can see that that has essentially disappeared from our scene. So now, yeah, we can't see that one at all. So now, if I go back to Overcast, you'll be able to see this even more, how we've kind of got that yellowish glow. And I'm still going to bump up my uh, my intensity on that, or my um, uh, lumens, rather, because that is still very, uh, very, very low. Let's try 500,000. Like I said, you might have to be very, very aggressive with your values here. You can also move it closer uh, to your figure, and you can also increase the scale. Um, if we select our primitive and go to parameters, um, I'm going to increase the scale, and that'll also increase the light output. There we go. Now you can see that really, really well. So if I wanted this to be more of an overcast look, then we would go into more of a kind of grayish, bluish uh, uh, color spectrum. So let's go back to surfaces, select pane, and this time let's go down like here, again, kind of bluish gray. And now that one is more matching the preset on our on our ghost light. So again, if you want kind of a dusky overcast look, go to more of the blue and gray uh, uh, end of the color spectrum. For sunrise, more yellow and orange. And then if you want to do daylight, we're going to go almost pure white. I might put a little bit of yellow in there. Let's go about right here. There we go, again, very similar to the daylight effect. So again, I really like the ghost light kit for the presets. It takes a, just a little bit longer to, to get everything set if you do it manually, but um, it also gives you more control over it. So if you don't like exactly the way that sunrise looks, maybe it's too orange and yellow, you want it just a little bit more subdued, then you can adjust that manually. Even though it takes a little bit longer, uh, you might wanna do that sometimes. Um, there are a few other presets, but again, these are just uh, affecting the uh, temperature and the light output. And actually, let's mess with the temperature a little bit real quick, and I'll kind of show you what that does. So if I go under emission color to emission temperature, so we set that at 6500K. And like I said before, if you shift it down, it's going to go into more of the red spectrum. So if I do that, now we're getting like a kind of a softer uh, uh, morning sunrise look. But if I go to the extreme end... There we go. Now it's basically just pure red. And then if I go the other direction, then it's going to shift it into more of the blue spectrum. So if we go all the way up on that, we kind of get that similar kind of a uh, kind of an overcast uh, cloudy day look. And as I say with everything, the key to this is to just experiment. Try different things. Try moving your light closer and further away. Try different cutout op opacities. Um, Try different emission colors, different emission temperatures, and just find out whatever you like. But again, just start a new scene. Don't be afraid to experiment and try some new things. So if you got something out of this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new uploads. And also be sure to check out my other channel in which I'm currently doing RenPy tutorials, but I'm getting ready to rebrand that channel. I haven't announced anything about it yet, but I've got some really cool stuff coming up. But right now it's full of RenPy tutorials, which is a great great, easy to use visual novel game creation engine. And I use that in conjunction with Daz 3D to make my own visual novels. So Daz 3D, I actually started learning that so I could create graphics for games and visual novels and started getting really into it. So if you want a way to use your graphics, definitely check that out. And I've got some really cool things on that channel and this one coming up. And be sure to leave me a comment if you have any uh, questions or if there's anything you'd like to see from a future video or tutorial. And that will just about do us. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.